Hello friends. My heartfelt greetings from Seoul. How are you today? First of all, I would like to thank my dear friends, Mr. Ansar Ali and Sri Ram Mohan Rai Ji for inviting me for such an important platform to share my thoughts and views about uh, Gandhi Ji in Korea. I think this is a very important platform where we can talk about Gandhi's work abroad. Many people don't know Gandhi has a strong following in Korea. But so far, Indians have ignored our Korean connections. Through this talk, I will do my best to reconnect Korea with India through peace building. As you all know, Korea and India have strong historical connections. During the peace process, during the historical years, India and Korea enjoyed a lot of strong spiritual connections. An Indian princess went to Korea and married a Korean king. 90% of Koreans claim the bloodline came from that marriage. So basically, most of the Koreans claim they have an Indian lineage. That is strong connection between India and Korea. Historically, Korea looked out India for many, many days. But somehow, during the times, our connection was lost. Only recently, Korea, India started coming to Korea again. But unfortunately, that connection was set up because of economic connection. Our spiritual and historical connection was lost. Only a few years ago, when India scholars started coming to Korea, they started thinking about reconnecting our spiritual roots with Korea. Now more and more work is being done to research of that connection. Unfortunately, we are not getting so much support from India. So I thought I should try through this connection with Indian friends to tell them that how much important connection we had with Korea. As you know, Korea is usually used to be a basically a Buddhist country. Buddhism is very strong religion in Korea. At least it used to be very strong religion in Korea. Buddhist way of life is basically Indian way of life. If you go to any Korean house, you will see our Indian connection. Their culture, their tradition, their way of worshipping is Indian. Now majority of Koreans have become Christian. That's a different story. That's also our failure. But traditionally, you can see the influence of India in Indian culture almost every home. And during the Buddhism, connections almost 70 to 80 percent Koreans was Buddhist. Slowly, 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 as the Christianity spread out, more and more Koreans gave up the past and started becoming Christians. But still, there's a lot of hope through which we can re-establish our spiritual and religious connection with Korea. Even during the Freedom struggle, Korean freedom fighters was strongly influenced by India freedom movement. Gandhi ji and Gandhi ji's thoughts played a very important role in Korean freedom struggle. This one famous uh, movement in Korea is called March 1 movement. It's a very peaceful movement against Japanese rule. The core idea of resisting Japanese peacefully came from India. Many Indian freedom fighters wrote about Korea. Our famous uh, Ravindra Tagorji wrote a very famous poem, inspiring poem, poem to inspire Korean freedom fighter to fight against Japan. That poem has become very famous. Can kind of war cry to fight against Chinese, Japanese imperialism. Dusan Fondesh and Mr. An, the great freedom fighter of Korea, was greatly influenced by our freedom movement. But somehow, 
the missile connection. Now, after the Korea achieved freedom, Korea was faced with a strong civil war. Here, Korea, here India also played a very important role to stop the war and unite the Korea game. If you study our history, you will see how strongly and how, how actively Korea, India played an active role in bringing the war to an end. And in Korea was very strongly influenced by India's peace building role. As in most of the countries which came to Korea during the, during the Civil War or you can say Korean War, in Cold War considerations, India was the only country which came to Korea to unite Korea peacefully. There was no power politics involved in our activities. And Korean could see clearly that our motives in come, to come to Korea is poorly humanitarians. We just, just don't want Korean people to fight each other and kill each other. And our role was appreciated, you know. Till the war ended, we played a very, very active role. Even during the, when the war ended, uh, more than uh, there was a serious issue of how to handle the Korean war prisoners. When nobody wanted to take the Korean war prisoners, India agreed to take them. There was a huge number of Koreans who don't want to go to Korea, North Korea, South Korea. We bring them to India and offer them to settle in India. And this came to settle in India, but slowly, slowly they left to other countries. That is a different question. But that, is, that showed how actively B was involved till 1940-50 on Korean Peninsula. That is an important point to think. What went wrong? Why we suddenly disconnect ourselves? Our Korea's tie with our ties with Korea by historical and long lived. But suddenly, after the end of the after the during the Cold War, our connection was completely shut off. How can we do that? You know? Korea is a very important civilization in East Asia. It's time to revive our historical, spiritual and political connection with Korea. I am Director of Peace Program in SSU in Seoul. I am living in Korea for 23 years. Many people are doing different kind of work and mostly they focus on economic cooperation. But I strongly believe economic cooperation is nothing without spiritual connections. What Gandhiji, about our spiritual values. So instead of focusing on how much trade we can do, how much investment we can do, how much money we can make, I decided to focus on how much love we can create, how much spiritual value we can reach. But very few people are there who are talking about Gandhiji, what Rana Tagore, and our spiritual connection and religious connection with Korea. During the Korean War, a lot of foreigner, foreigners came to Korea. More than 21 countries joined the Korean War along with USA to fight communism in North Korea. And Korea was divided permanently. But as soon as the war was uh, over, and they left. As if nothing happened. But Korea was divided. A lot of thousands of thousands of families was left divided. Somebody left their mother, somebody left their brother, nobody feel the pain. So there's now, there's more than 57,000 families in South Korea alone. I don't know the number in North Korea. Who are dying to meet their family members in North Korea. Nobody feels their pain. They pretend nothing happened. But as you go visit them, you can feel the pain of the family. Everybody came to Korea, served their interest and went back. Now they pretend. So there's strong moral imperative. We are a country of Gandhiji. We are a country of moral values. We simply cannot pretend. There's no pain. Korea is very rich. Dwarf. People are living very economically, very viable life. But the more you dig deep, you can see pain in the eyes of Koreans. Koreans are divided. They are longing for unification of Korea. And nobody is doing anything. China and USA keep fighting among themselves, but most of the world is silent. They are doing nothing to unite Korea. They cannot feel the pain of the family. 
How can you do that? India has serious stakes of peace building on Korea. We are a country with strong moral and spiritual values. We cannot pretend there is no pain in Korean society. When thousands of thousands of people dying every month, I was told more than 300 to 400 because most of the parents who was divided during the Korean War are almost 80 years old, 90 years old. Now they are dying out. Every month, more than 300, 400 people die. Without meeting their parents, without meeting their brothers, sisters, can you feel the pain? Must you go there, go to the bill, then you feel how much pain. How can you do that? How can we pretend? Nothing is happening. There is deep, deep pain in Korean society. And that pain has to be felt. We simply cannot ignore the pain of the divided family. That is very important. So we as an Indian, we as the children of Gandhiji, have to come and try to heal the bond of the divided family. We cannot shrink our responsibility. This is what we stand for. Our whole scripture, our whole belly system is based on humanitarianism. How can we not do something? How can we pretend nothing is happening? As you know, my second point is uh, what happened when Korea became rich? As you know, Korea used to be a very poor country, just like any other Asian country. But suddenly it got a very quick and fast development. But in the race to become rich, many, many spiritual and moral values were sacrificed and completely ignored. Now, Korea is facing a serious moral crisis. Family in Korea is collapsing. Nobody, almost 60 to 70 percent of Korean women don't want to marry. They are unmarried. And child birth rate is collapsing. Now, child birth rate in Korea is only 0.95. It should be 2.10 to sustain the population. It is less than half. How can we do that? It means there is a price to pay for a fast economic development. You can achieve fast economic development, but it, it comes with a price. Extreme materialism, extreme individualism. And a lot of parents are being abandoned. You can see a lot of poor Korean parents, for sons and children are very rich, but their parents are collecting a cardboard in the street to pay for their bills. They cannot, they have no income because they spend all of their money, all of their wealth in raising their children. But now, Children, new generation is highly materialistic. And they don't want to care about their parents. Here also, we have to go back to Gandhiji to learn about the importance of moral values, moral life. What family, strong family values. Here also we can help Korea. That strong family, happy family is a basic foundation for happy society. Without strong family, moral family, you cannot have a strong and prosperous economy. Here, but this connection has been lost. Here also, Gandhi is very important. My institute, we try to again and again try to emphasize through our paper, through our seminars, through our uh, lot of intervention into the Korean society, we try to tell them, no, you cannot have a happy society without having a happy family. To have a happy family, you have to marry, you have to have children. Because having children is everything. When the society stops having children, everything stops. School stops, buses stops, hospital stops, economy stops, military stops, everything. Everything depends on family. So, godly scheme of things, godly planning has to be sustained. You simply cannot intervene in the godly scheme of things. Gods want us to have children. But in Korea, children are considered as a product. They are colored as a product. What is the, what is the benefit of having children? What is the non-benefit of having children? How much it will cost? But how much it will cost? How can you do that? Children are not a product. 
children are a gift of God, as Gandhi ji told us. Until we Koreans don't look at Korea, children are a gift of God, as a very important mechanism to keep the life going on. Korea has no future. Here also, Korea can learn from India. Third, most important, most important, important where India has important role to play in the peace world. As you know, North Korea and South Korea are trying to unify. But again and again, Cold War politics, superpower politics come into the play and peace process collapse. Even now, we had a lot of hopes from Mr. Moon's peace initiative. But somehow, USA intervened in the process and peace process collapsed. So, we are back to the scale one. No hope. And North Korea is now refusing to even talk to South Koreans. One year, two years ago, North President Moon went to South Korea and gave a speech. He was being considered as a hero. As a treated as a hero in North Korea. But now they don't want to even talk to him. They cut his phone line. Can you believe? One year, the same person who is being treated as a hero in North Korea is now being treated as an outcast. How? Oh, this is a result of power politics. But unfortunately, no other country, no other country in the world care enough of Korea. Only superpower politics, China, USA, they keep playing themselves. But India, as a moral force, country of Gandhiji, has to play an active role to make sure that two Koreas unite peacefully. We have a strategic, a moral imperative. As you know, North Korea has uh, succeeded in its nuclear program. Just imagine, as a peace process collapsed, a nuclear war happened. But what will happen? Seoul will be completely wiped out. So Seoul has a population of more than 25 million. One bomb, whole world gone. And it is an uh, environment crisis for the whole Asia. Gandhiji warned us against the nuclear war. We, the children of Gandhiji, simply cannot pretend nothing is happening here. Korea is the country where the possibility of nuclear war is very, very high. And we simply cannot ignore the danger and wall for all of us. So far, we just read the newspaper and pretending, oh, nothing is going to happen. But with each passing day, we are getting closer to nuclear catastrophe. If nothing is done, possibility of nuclear war on Korean parents is very high. We still have some time. So we have to go beyond power politics and work on a humanitarian basis so that Korea is united peacefully and danger of nuclear war is piped out. We have to do. We have to intervene when we have still some time. We, we simply cannot take this threat lightly. This threat is very serious. Anybody who is following the nuclear program in North Korea know what kind of nuclear weapon they have. It's very, very destructive weapon system they have now. They don't want to do any more experiment. They, have, uh, they are done with all the experiments, all the, all the testing they, have, they wanted to do. So, if you ask any experts, they will do. North Korea is done with this nuclear, bomb, nuclear program because they have got everything they wanted to have. It means North Korea's nuclear program has reached the highest possible stage. Just imagine, with that kind of weapon system, with that kind of nuclear program, what kind of destruction they can bring, not only to South Korea, but to the whole Asia. And, you know, if this nuclear war, superpower, power politics will always come into play. So, what do we do? How can we pretend nothing is happening? How Indian scholars, how children of Gandhiji can pretend? Oh, sorry, we don't even know. War is coming to North Korea. War is coming to Korean Peninsula. We have no excuse. We cannot pretend. Oh, sorry, we didn't know. No, we are getting for each and every day, we are getting to closer to nuclear war. Because nothing is working. And there is limit to which North Korea can take the economic pressure. As you know, currently North Korea is under extreme economic sanctions. North Korea has to take permission for everything, even buying food. Even they cannot sell their fish. Unparalleled human history. 
never before in the history of mankind a country has been subjected to this kind of cruel, cruel economic sanctions. How long North Korea can take this kind of pressure? One day they will revolt and they will declare war. North Korea, Americans don't care about their life in North Korea. Life in North Korea is very, very miserable, very, very poor. Extreme economic control. Almost everything. North Korea was selling, trying to make some money to buy food, buy medicine. Everything. Humanitarian, even humanitarian, even during the Corona virus, they couldn't bring any medicine. We think how much, what is the limit of North Korea to, to uh, take the pressure, economic pressure from USA? Nobody worry. In India, we don't even care. We pretend, oh, maybe North Korea is far away, in a far away land. But we are so wrong. We simply cannot ignore the pressure, economic pressure being put on North Korea. There must be, must be some other way to control North Korea's nuclear program. There must be some other way to denuclearize Korea. We simply cannot punish North Korean children and poor people for the political decision, their political leadership making. We have to intervene. We have to bring peace to the Korean Peninsula because otherwise the price we might be forced to pay in the coming years is too high. So, how can we ignore? Local war is real, threat is real, we have to prevent it. Third important point which I want to mention why we should be more active on Korean Peninsula is the power shift, which is very important. We cannot ignore. As you know, the recent rise of China is changing everything. USA, which was dominating this region for the last 70 years, is being pushed back. Only 10 to 20 years ago, when I came to Korea, 23 years ago, USA was the most powerful force in the region. USA was the biggest trading partner. USA was the biggest trade owner. Biggest students number going, going to Korea. Everything, USA, USA, USA. Education, economics, military. But now, USA is being pushed in every field. Nobody wants to go to USA to study. Almost 70% of Korean students are going to China to study. Korea's trade with China is almost 70% uh, more than USA. USA is pushed back. USA is no, no more. Highest business partner, highest educational partner. No. It's China. Power shift is happening. And we have to study. What does it mean for India? So we need friends, you know. Korea is economically, technologically superpower. Whatever side, if now currently South Korea is a partner of USA. But what happens if power shift happens and USA is pushed back and USA, South Korea join, join China? Do you know? Fundamentally, it will change everything. South Korea's technology companies, Samsung, Hyundai, LG, they are powerhouses, power tigers in the sector of technology. Once they join the Chinese company, they, be, they will become unbeatable. They will control the whole world economy. Where we will stand? We have no future. South Korea has one of the most powerful navy. Just imagine if South Korean navy join hands with the Chinese navy. What chances do we have? Nothing. So, strategically speaking, we cannot ignore Korea's technological, economical and military strength. Here also, we need to build stronger connection with Korea. But how can we win a place in Korea? By reconnecting ourselves with Korea. Korean people are looking for opportunity to reconnect with Korea. But somehow, our government, our diplomats, are not properly able to comprehend what it means to reconnect with Korea. What kind of strength, what kind of uh, harmony, what kind of uh, positivity will come if, if you become with the uh, friends in South Korea? They can't understand the kind of limitless energy which will be produced when South Korean civilization and Indian civilization join hands. They don't understand. 
So our relationship with South Korea, with North, North Korea is purely diplomatic. You just go and shake hands, say hello, how are you, take a picture. No serious effort is made to dig into our relationship and take it to a next level. Few people like me who understand the strategic importance of Korea, economic, economic importance of Korea, and spiritual and religious importance of Korea. I try to reconnect our country with Korea. But where's the sport? Where's the intellectuals? Where's the diplomats? Where's the government policy makers? Nobody's there. How can we, how can we ignore Korea, country like Korea? So it's time. That is why I wanted to connect with friends like you who understand the importance of Gandhiji and what kind of role Gandhiji can play in building and strengthening our partnership with East Asian countries. You know, last year when we were celebrating Gandhiji 150th anniversary, Gandhiji's birthday was celebrated at the highest possible level. Korean president organized many, many events, even though there was no Indian effort apart from me. I organized two, three seminars, but still, Mr. Moon wanted to tell, wanted to give a strong message that we love Gandhiji. We understand what, what does it mean as a, as a spiritual power, but we did nothing back. We couldn't see the opportunity. Why? Because our policy makers are very, very short-sighted. They are just working for salary, but just working for money. The lack of vision from on the part of our policy maker is serious hindrance to take the relationship to the highest level. So what do we do? We connect to the people like you, who understand. Ultimately, what it means is a spiritual connection. You can have economic deal, survive for a few days, survive for a few years, start creating money for a few years, and then after that time, it die. No economic investment, no economic deal can survive for 700 years. But it's the only spiritual and religious investment which survive for centuries. So economic deals are worthless, useless. They have they are a very, very limited lifespan. So we work for something long, we survive for thousands of years. That's what I always said. Of course, we can make some money with the Korea. Korean companies are rich, prosperous, they are full of technology. But men of vision can never run after technology. And they cannot ignore the bigger picture. These are my initial remarks. And uh, this is what I wanted to say, but I would like to uh, share uh, my experience if you have any questions and uh, wanted to know what I'm thinking, what's my plan. You're most welcome to ask me a question and I will try to answer as much as possible. Okay, uh, thank you. I have, th I think I have one question from uh, uh, Mr. Ansar Ali. How do Korean people rate Gandhiji? Oh, as I told you in my initial remarks, Gandhiji is a hero everywhere. They have many schools. Named after Gandhi. It's yours. The statues of Gandhi can be found in important places. Gandhiji has a very high regard in Korean society. But Problem is with us, we don't know how much Gandhi is loved in Korea. So we have failed ourselves. We have to come back to Korea and understand what kind of influence Gandhi has on Korean society, on Korean thinking, and Korean political ideology. Gandhi is everywhere. And they understand the importance of Gandhi in economic development, in social development, in moral development. I don't want to say it again and again. Gandhi is everywhere. But it's Unfortunately, we in India don't know about it. And we have to know it. Okay. Okay, let me check the questions. Yes, 
I have a question for Ram Mohan Rai ji. He's talking about the picture of Gandhi ji when he presented to presented to some Korean friend. Yes, yes, sir. This is a very, very true. The reason I am loved and respected in Korea because I talk about Gandhi ji. Most of the scholars who came to Korea study here, two year, three year, but I was able to receive limitless love, limitless respect in Korea because I talk about Gandhi ji and Gandhi is the spiritual figure of Korea. So when Ram Mohan Rai ji said that uh, a Korean showed great respect to Gandhi ji, so this is no surprise for me because I know how much how much uh, Koreans respect Gandhi ji. But unfortunately, again and again I come to the same plan. We don't know how much, how much uh, care they have for our value system. I think uh, this is a real question. Is Gandhi is relevant today? Of course, Gandhi is relevant today. Gandhi can play very important role either side. Do you? Uh, during the last year when we were celebrating, we had organized a very big seminar. I big I invited one of the top poetess of Korea. She wrote a very famous about how Gandhi ji can change Korea's life. Gandhi is important in every field. Gandhi's value can play a big role in uniting. Quran Peninsula. Peaceful conflict of resolution is very important. And Gandhi's techniques and methods can play a very important role in bringing two Koreas together. And Gandhi's views on nuclear proliferation and nuclear bombs can solve nuclear crisis in Korea. And Gandhi's importance of moral education and family values can bring back the Korean family. And Gandhi's importance of village cottage society is important for extreme big collaborators where man is used to mere tool in the hands of Kumar Deepak Jiri Pushabi Gandhi Ji ka prabhaab aap koreya mein kaise dikhte hai Arre, jayet bhoat achi chiz hai Thank you for a good question Deepak Ji I think Gandhi Ji का प्रभाव आप हर एक जगह देख सकते हैं। Last year when Gandhi Ji came to Modi Ji came to Korea, we decided to put one of Gandhi Ji's statue in one of the top most Korean university. When I went there, not only students, thousands of people came to see. Gandhi statue. I was surprised. How come? How come so many people? So whenever we talk about Gandhi ji, people turn up like anything. This very good question. Nitin Mitra ji pushed him. How Gandhi ji ideology can take the world out of this guy? Hey, Gandhi ji is a basic value. Basic. Basic foundation for whole thing. Lord Gandhi ji is nothing. As I told you, nuclear crisis, Gandhi ji is the answer. Family crisis, Gandhi is the answer. Family family crisis, Gandhi is the answer. And Koreans know that. And that's why they come back 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 to again and again, again and again to Gandhi ji. Never before in my twenty three years stay in Korea, a Korean president celebrating some international celebrities' birthday. Only Gandhi ji. And Gandhi ji's birthday was celebrated on such a big scale. Dinner, receptions, seminars, conferences, everywhere. So Gandhi's philosophy of peaceful conflict of the resolution is very appropriate for division of Korea, for unifying Korea and solving Korea's nuclear crisis. We have to tell through the language of Gandhi ji, how nuclear weapons can destroy not only Korean Peninsula, but the whole world. 
सीमा शर्मा जी पूछ रहे हैं डू यू थिंक कोरियन पीपल लाइक गए थॉट्स एंड दे वॉन्ट टू अप्लाई इन द लाइफ यस मैम यस मैम सत्यार अहिंसा यस मैम ऑफकोर्स गांधी जी ये तो क्लियर है ना देखिए क्या हो रहा है अब इस कोरिया में कोरिया में भारत कभी लड़ाई नहीं हुई तो ये क्या कर रहे हैं गांधी जी के वैल्यू जो है पीसफुल रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ कंफ्लिक्ट उससे बात कर रहे हैं कि मिस्टर मून है उसने कभी बात नहीं की पता है अगर हम शांति लानी है इफ यू वॉन्ट पीस हमको अपने देश को बचाना है तो हम लोगों को शांति से बात करना पड़ेगी इसलिए गांधी जी को बार बार आगे लाते हैं गांधी जी के अलावा हमारा कुछ है भी नहीं है इनको उनको पता है इनकी लड़ाई करेंगे तो मर जाएंगे मरो टोटल एवरीथिंग विल डिस्ट्रॉय नथिंग लेफ्ट जी लोगों को पता है कि हम लोग गांधी जी के अलावा गांधी पीसफुल कंसेप्ट पीसफुल रेजोल्यूशन ऑफ कंसेप्ट इज ओनली ऑप्शन अवेलेबल टू देम बींग नॉर्थ कोरिया निकल पावर अभी हम जब जाएंगे अच्छा मैं जैसे बोला कि लोगों ने बच्चे पैदा बंद कर दिए अब स्कूल में क्या हो रहा है स्कूल लोग स्कूल में जो बच्चों को बता रहे हैं कि फैमिली क्यों जरूरी है उसमें वार बार वार बार गांधी जी घंटा था उसको बार बार पता चलता कि गांधी क्यों चाहिए हम लोग क्यों फैमिली वर्क में है क्यों बच्चे पैदा कर रहे हैं हम लोग क्यों फैमिली जरूरी होती है मॉडल वैल्यू क्यों जरूरी होती है बताते रहते हैं दे कीप टैलें और एजुकेशन में कंफ्लिक्ट में इंडस्ट्री में सब जगह तो गांधी जी है इसके अलावा क्या होगा हम लोगों को हम लोगों की कमी है गांधी जी तो कमिंग बैक टू आर वॉस एवरी स्फियर देखने को लेना चाहिए वी हैव टू हैव आईज टू से गांधी इन्फ्लुएंस ऑलमोस्ट एवरी सेक्टर इन लोग पता चल गया कि एक्सट्रीम मटेरियलिज्म एक्सट्रीम इंडिविजुअलिज्म से क्या होता है इन लोग पता चल गया अब बहुत कर रहे हैं आप लोग कह रहे हैं कि शादी करो बच्चे करो हम लोग को जे पैसे देंगे वो पैसे देंगे इन्हें पता चल गया मटेरियलिज्म इंडिविजुअलिज्म लीड टू डेथ एंड दे नो दैट तो ये बहुत कॉमन क्वेश्चन है गांधी जी तो इनको पता दे दर्ज बाई दे प्रमोटिंग गांधी जी लाइक एनी थिंग इफ यू गो टाइप गांधी जी इन कोरिया यू सी हंड्रेड्स ऑफ आर्टिकल्स एंड कोरियन प्रेजिडेंट गिविंग स्पीचेस गिविंग स्पीचेस ऑन द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फोरम्स डिफरेंट आइडियाज जस्ट ट्राई ट्राई टू गूगल हाउ मच कोरियन प्रेजिडेंट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट गांधी जी देन यू विल नो बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली वी इन इंडिया कुड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड हाउ मच Gandhi's uh, moral values are being used by other countries. Here we have to. That's why I came to Korea. That's why I came to this forum, this platform to connect with uh, our girl friends. You guys are doing great work, but you need to uh, in, in what you call uh, uh, broaden your perspective. You have to look beyond India, you know. We need you here. What we are doing is very important, but we we cannot live in isolation. Nuclear war in Korea can destroy everything. Environment crisis in Korea can destroy everything. Crisis in Indian Ocean can destroy everything. So we are connected in a global world. And Gandhi ji's values, Gandhi ji's thoughts can save us. Just imagine environment crisis in Korea. You know, serious crisis. Already crops. Diversification is going on because the the cold crops cannot be grown anymore in Korea. So, environment crisis. Gandhi ji was talking about the crisis long time ago, and now they know what Gandhi ji is talking about. Environment crisis, environment crisis, population crisis, family crisis. Where do we go now? And how can we people like me can fight alone if you don't support us? So you guys have to broaden your perspective. Think beyond, beyond India. That's what whole purpose of today's today's interaction was to tell you that uh, we need you. The role you guys, this country, this this uh, this, uh, we are heading towards a very serious crisis. Not only nuclear war, environment crisis. It's very serious, and Korea is one of the victim. It's being affected by environment like anything. so it's time when you start to we gandhi ji is the teacher of the whole world not just india and his values his teachings is applicable to the whole world to today's problem and this is happening today in korea 
environment if you go to uh, see in the today you can see how environment is affecting fishes in the sea crops in the fields flowers in the mountains everywhere how do we what do we do now and how much time we have left and how can we how can we how can we quiet pretend oh just uh, teach our kids in gandhi ji in india address our job is done no our job is not done gandhi is not for india only gandhi is a, a spiritual guru for the whole world gandhi's teaching has to be used to solve world's problem and that's why people like me are trying to correct with our roots so that we get energy from you and try to do some actual work on the ground so other country other civilizations other people can benefit from our spiritual leaders i think uh, this is what i wanted to say today once again thank you very much for your kind kind opportunity i really feel very happy i hope my lecture my speech my few words will try to ignite some energy and you to do something for other civilization for other people also other people also need you we also need gandhi ji here it is time for you people to look beyond home you know look for the crisis which is happening all around you the serious crisis in the indian ocean the serious crisis in the environment the serious hunger crisis water crisis lot is happening if gandhi ji then who if do not then who we have to start asking this question thank you very much my friends so happy to be you with you and once again if you if any of you have any question what how can we work together how can we synergy create a synergy for india and korea please feel free mr ansar ali is my good friend we were together in jnu and he's my buddy you know so you go reach to him and he can connect you with me and we can take from there and he knows how much i love gandhi ji from the day from jain knew i refused to study anything else i studied gandhi ji i knew that gandhi ji is the only answer to everything thank you very much asika